Welcome to Geek Do-It-Yourself Mechanic. The purpose of this video is to discuss um, an ignition issue on a 2000 Ford Focus where I received P300 uh, and a P0351 and a P0352 uh, trouble codes. So let's begin. So from the website you navigate to case studies and focus P0300, P0351, and P0352. My marine son was uh, wanted to take uh, his little sister um, to teach her how to drive and they were driving to the uh, local high school. Um, it's, it was a little uh, rainy out moisture in the air and right in the parking lot when they changed over and she was going to drive the car um, the car bucked stuttered and died um, my son tried to restart it but it but he he couldn't restart it so he called me to tell me what was going on with the car and I was actually very surprised um, this focus has been very reliable it was the car he used through high school, never really had an issue, you know. It was an older car, uh, 12 years or something like that, years old. Uh, but still rock solid, no issues, so I was quite surprised. Um, since it was a little rainy out, I waited till the next day and packed up my diagnostic gear and headed to the high school parking lot. Um, I tried to start it in, in hopes I could drive it home where all my tools were and, and all that. But of course, that wasn't going to happen. So I worked on it in the, in the parking lot. Um, I, did, I was able to start it this time, which I found interesting. Um, but the car had no power and it idled horribly. I then decided to pull the trouble codes and I received a P0301 and a P0351 uh, trouble code. Um, I figured the misfire was caused by the ignition so I didn't go through the classic uh, uh, ignition uh, issues. Um, I attacked the, the coil first and this car leverages a uh, waste spark configuration so uh, right here you can see these are the cylinders and this is the the coil so one and four are fired together and three and two are fired together now what does that mean it that means one and four are 180 out of each other that means well one's on the beginning of the power stroke one's at the beginning of the exhaust they're 180 out and two and three are the same way they're 180 out what th which means only one of the cylinders at a time in the in the pair will will actually do something when you spark it so in one case it's sparking the exhaust and the power stroke and obviously when you spark exhaust nothing happens I then uh, pulled up the wiring diagram I brought the manuals and my scan tool gave me some some tips on the the coil how it worked um, the, the coil uh, obviously had four you know four plugs up top that connected to the uh, each spark plug but uh, the control of it it had three pins pin one controlled uh, two and three pin two is uh, battery voltage and pin three was uh, controlled uh, one and four uh, classically and looking at the wiring diagram I thought I'd use the Java applet circuit simulator to demonstrate what I learned by reviewing the wiring diagrams. Um, so let's review what we have here. We have the coil right here. We have the primary on the left, the secondary on the right. This little gap here represents the um, gap in the spark plug. Um, this switch is the PCM controlling the coil. Um, here's how it works. When this is pulled down, if you notice, it's at 12 volts. So this part of the circuit is at 12 volts, all the way up to that switch. Um, so the, the, 
voltage is high. When I close this, it's going to pull down the circuit, which is going to create a magnetic field on this side of the coil and it's inducing a voltage on the secondary and when I release the switch it's gonna uh, get the again induce the voltage on the secondary which will then jump the gap to get to ground let's see it in action again it's high it's low I'm charging the primary I release and there it is you saw it jump across the, the spark plug let's do that again I bring it down um, as at the time I hold this down, that's the dwell. Okay, so let's do it again. And there's your spark. I hooked up my scope meter to pins one and three, and when you look, um, it looks uh, the bottom uh, looks very good. It has a nice spark line, but the top seems to be missing one. Uh, spark line, but the other doesn't really look good either. But I thought, oh, okay, I have a bad plug. And since Wade the spark, maybe it's shorting it out or whatever. So, thinking it was one plug, I checked the spark plug and the plug wire and everything was great. I was puzzled, scratched my head, and go, well, let me look at the coil. Maybe there's something wrong. So I disconnected the, uh, the coil and lifted it up with four screws and it's good I did the bottom of it was blown out so I needed a new coil so I replaced it um, the coil is located over here in the circle here to the right side of, of the car driver side um, there's a mass air meter the batteries over here and there's the uh, exhaust and the intake here and or I'm sorry the valve covers intake is over here um, and uh, there's the right there where the mouse is at is the uh, coil so I changed it out it was an easily installation like I said uh, four screws a clip for the control wires and then the four plug wires um, on the drive home everything was good I made a left turn the car stumbled uh, I was able just to make it in my driveway and the check engine light turned on I was like, oh, um, I decided to, to try to start it again. It wouldn't start. So I was like, oh, man, of course I didn't have time to do this. But I did decide to pull the codes. And I got a P0351 again. I was uh, a little awestruck, confused, didn't understand how this could happen to me. Thought I'd just resolve this. Um, so I figured uh, I probably didn't install a bad coil. I, I, the probability of that was low, you know, like a defective coil. I knew that probably wasn't it. So there had to be something that was killing my ignition coil. What, what could kill the ignition coil? It being grounded too long, causing it to fry. So I'm like, well, I must have a hurt wire, right? Because if you think about it, wh when did they have the issue? It was moist out. It was raining and remember I started the car and it was dry and it did okay drove it home um, and it had its issue so perhaps it has to do with movement moisture in the air don't really know so I decided to research so that night I watched uh, new numerous videos from uh, some of my favorite YouTube uh, mechanics, Ford Tech Make You Loco is a good, good tech, and Scanner Danner, great instructor. Um, I was watching one of the Ford Tech uh, Make You Loco videos, and I decided just to see. I briefly described my issue. It was a very similar issue to mine in the comments, and he responded uh, maybe a couple hours later. And which I thought was really nice of him because you know he has a, a a lot of people viewing his his videos and making comments. I thought it was really cool of him. And he said my make and model had a propensity for the coil wire loom to ground to the EGR tube. So I took what Ford Tech Make You Loco said and applied also some of the teaching Scanner Danner has taught me, where that you look for uh, hurt wires 
corrupted wires where there's heat and or movement for example um on your firewall those walls those wires and those looms strapped to that usually don't have an issue it's the wires that are crossing from let's say stable to the engine or in this case rubbing against something those are your usual or potential areas for a a problem so I went through all the manuals uh, trying to find where familiar making myself familiar with the car where's the EGR tube where's the loom so when I'm looking at the engine the next day it makes sense to me so I uh, that's what the engine bay looks like and I focused on the right hand side because I thought somewhere in this area well maybe this whole circuit uh, circle that would be where the corruption or issue would be so this tube right here the one covered in a uh, heat probably asbestos or something uh, material it, that's the EGR tube and I bet some of you can see the potential issue already some of you might be looking over here that's not it um, it's right there that elbow is rubbing against that and when I again when I, I wanted to say I want to make sure to say this when I was looking I used my eyes as much as I could I didn't want to touch anything because I knew the car was in the stitch in the hard fault state in other words it was in the in the state of which the error was occurring so I wanted to be really careful and not change anything you know for lack of a better phrase it's like a murder scene you don't want to touch anything because the evidence is there you don't want to corrupt your evidence I'm um, sorry for the analogy but that's what came to mind but anyway so that's what I did and I saw that and I braved and I touched it and I turned it up and look what I found you can see clearly there's the issue you can actually see the copper wire so then I decided to uh, cut apart that that protective loom and see how bad the damage which clearly that's an issue because if you look at the the tube this uh, EGR tube you can't tell in this picture but there's actually gaps uh, in the material where it's actually you can get to the tube and the tube is obviously touching part of the exhaust which is touching the block which is ground so when I opened it up there it was and I was lucky lucky only one wire was corrupted I checked out everything even though maybe a little black or sooted from the from this burn right here it was okay so I decided to cut the bad section out which was from here to here uh, solder in a new piece I then used a shrink tubing on both ends uh, I then replaced the uh, I, I replaced the I cut out this piece put in a new piece I wrapped it in electrical tape. I then again wrapped it in heat resistant tape that I bought at the local uh, auto store. And then I used a wire tie to pull it away from from this area. So now there's a wire tie in there. I don't unfortunately I don't have a picture of it, but I pulled this away. So now it's not touching this EGR tube at all anymore. Um, I then installed the new uh, coil, a new coil. I didn't want to do it before because I didn't want to blow it out, right? Because I was in that air state. I installed the new coil and it works. So that's a fix. Um, I would say uh, as Ford uh, Tech Make You Loco, this is a common problem with the Ford Focus uh, gener this generation. So I hope uh, this might help you um, when I did my research it appeared a lot of people had this similar issue um, and unfortunately I went through through two coils before I found it um, I probably should have done research looked it up to see if it was a common issue and I could have probably resolved this with the first coil but you live and learn and I thought I'd share this with you so maybe for you you'll get it within one coil thank you for watching I hope you found the information helpful.